Warning. Film thoughts contain spoilers and opinions. I have a lot of guilty pleasure movies nowadays, but one of my top guilty pleasures of last year was none other than Charlie Day's directorial debut called Fool's Paradise. The wacky premise for this film is that a man that is unable to talk, played by Charlie Day, is mistaken for being an actor named Latte Pronto, and lots of hijinks ensue as we watch the highs and lows of his fame. Latte Pronto! Good work. Excuse me, Mr. Pronto. I'm a publicist for the, um, can I call you Latte? This film really serves itself well as a tribute to silent filmmaking back in the day with Charlie Chaplin. Granted, this isn't a silent film, but back then a lot of those films just worked off of physical and situational comedy. That being said, the situations that Latte Pronto is put through in this movie are just bonkers. This guy really has no control over what's happening since he's unable to speak for himself, so a lot of the movie is him being dragged around from place to place by different characters. He starts off as some guy on the street, but Ray Liotta's character sees him and brings him on a film set for to stand in for an actor who's played by Charlie Day as well. That's a pretty funny way to explain that, I'm not gonna lie. One thing I really enjoy about this film is that it's wholesome to the very end. In the beginning, the doctor classifies Latte of having very little understanding of the world around him, and perhaps the only thing that could improve that is if he experiences at least one significant connection with another person. That's where Latte's publicist, Lenny, comes in, played by Ken Jeong, who I'll admit might not be able to pull off the emotional scenes we get with him, but I love his camaraderie with Charlie Day in this film. What are you trying to sleep out here? What are you looking for? Drugs? That's no good! Look, I can get you some if you need it, but we can't have that in the papers. No, I've been following you all night. I'm parked outside your house, waiting to take you to set tomorrow, but enough is enough, buddy! Lenny is at first very selfish, he's worried more about being famous for discovering a star than actually making his client happy, and he's constantly trying to weasel his way into Hollywood and have a taste of the high life. One thing this movie does extremely well is its handling of Latte Pronto. You could easily have everyone berate him and look down on him for being mute and having the mind of a Labrador Retriever, at least according to the doctor, but the film doesn't do that. Each character treats Latte like they would any other person, which leads to even crazier situations for the audience to enjoy seeing him in. The film also stars Kate Beckinsale, Adrian Brody, Common, John Malkovich, Jillian Bell, Jason Sudeikis, and even Jason Bateman pops in there for a bit. They all serve their purpose as either wacky characters for Latte to interact with, or over-the-top characterizations of Hollywood talent. For example, Latte saves a man's life and is awarded the key to the city, but then he's suddenly getting pitched an idea to run for office by the mayor, and Latte is so willing to follow directions for anyone that he just goes along with this. Then he's being kidnapped by two brothers who threaten his life and tell him that if he leaves politics behind, then he'll get his acting career back. That is why we crave fame and power and money. For what you want, what I want, and what all men want is the unimpeded expulsion of our jism. This has got to be a nod at how nowadays if any big name gets involved in activism or makes any political statement at all, nine times out of ten the industry will have a problem with it, thus damaging their career. That's a lot to read into when it comes to this little comedy film, I know, but that's what I got out of it. The icing on the cake is when Latte finally abandons his acting career and wanders the street aimlessly just looking for something to do, until Lenny finds him and he apologizes for all that he's done. Earlier in the film, there's a mix-up at a hospital in which Latte believes that Lenny is dead, so in this moment, Latte doesn't even really react to Lenny's apologies. He's just happy to see that the one person who stuck beside him is alive. That's what leads Latte to finally speak, having made a significant connection with Lenny, and I do love the moment where he speaks. I get how it kind of takes away from the overall gimmick of the film, but it was just very wholesome. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. So, let me know what you guys think of Fool's Paradise. Am I completely alone on this film? Did you at least enjoy the physical and situational comedy? Whatever the case may be, let me know down in the comments below because the best part about film thoughts is that we all have different ones. Take care and goodbye.